Hello there. In my last video, I covered 15 Power Query interface shortcuts. But if you are an advanced user and you spend your time in the advanced editor, writing your own M code or editing the code that Power Query generates, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to show you 15 advanced editor keyboard shortcuts that you will find really useful while working with the advanced editor. So let's see what these are. So here I already have the Power Query editor open and the first keyboard shortcut I want to show you is how to open the advanced editor. And the keyboard shortcut for that is Alt W Q. So you first press the Alt key, then the W key and then the Q key and that is going to open the advanced editor. So here if I press Alt then W and then Q, it opens this advanced editor that has the entire query and the code for the query. While you may not see an option to change the zoom levels in Power Query, there is a keyboard shortcut to do that. Hold the Control and the Shift key and now when you press the plus key while holding the Control and the Shift key, you'll see that the zoom level increases. So you can see that the font of the text has increased. And if you hold the Control and Shift key and then use the minus key, then it is going to change the zoom level. So it is going to zoom out. Now, if you want to set this back to the original zoom level, you can use control zero. So hold the control key and then press the zero key and it is going to bring back the zoom level to 100%. If you want to convert a line or the entire step into a comment so that it is not part of your actual query, then you can add two forward slash signs here in the beginning of the line. So if I add two forward slash signs, you can see that the line changes into green color, which means that it is now a comment. Now, this can also be done using a keyboard shortcut. For example, if you want to convert this entire line into a comment, just select it and then use the keyboard shortcut control forward slash. So hold the control key and then press forward slash and you'll see that this entire line has been converted into a comment. If you want to convert multiple lines into comments, you can select multiple lines and then use the same keyboard shortcut, control forward slash. And you'll see that this line has been converted into a comment and this line has been converted into a comment. So they are separate, but they're still both comments now. Now, if you want to convert multiple lines into comment, for example, let's say I want to convert all these steps into a comment. Now I can use uh, control and forward slash, but there is another keyboard shortcut that will make this entire block as one single comment. And the shortcut for that is Alt, Shift and A. So you hold the Alt and the Shift key and then press the A key. And when you do that, you can see it has now converted into green color and it starts with forward slash followed by an asterisk and ends with an asterisk followed by forward slash, which means that this entire block is now a comment. Now, if you want to uncomment it, you can use the same keyboard shortcut. So Alt, Shift and A, and this is going to uncomment it, remove the comment uh, identifier and you get your step back. Same is the case with Control forward slash. So if I use it, it converts this line into a comment. And if I want to uncomment it, then I can use the same keyboard sh shortcut again and it is going to remove the comment. Also, what you can do is if you are writing a new line and you want this to be a comment, for example, let's say I want to write some notes in this step or in this query and I want this to be here in the beginning. So I want to write a comment about what this query does. I can use the keyboard shortcut control forward slash and it is going to automatically insert these two slashes. So anything I write here is going to be a comment. And the same thing can be done with the other keyboard shortcut, which is Alt Shift A. So if I hold the Alt and the Shift key and press the A key, it inserts this, which means that anything I write in between here, it could be multiple lines. It would all be considered one single comment. If you want to reorder these steps, then instead of copy pasting it, you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt followed by an up or down arrow key. So in this case, let's say I want this step, this inserted year step to be the last step in my query. Now, instead of me copy pasting it, I can select anywhere in this line. So bring the cursor anywhere in this line, then hold the Alt key and then press the down arrow key. And when I do that, it is going to bring that step one line down. See what happens when I use this, it is going to bring this down. And when I use the up arrow key, it is going to bring it up. So if I want this to reorder these steps, I can simply select a step and then use the up and down arrow key to change its position. When you're writing or editing code in the advanced editor, you would notice that when you select something, if that is repeated again in the code, it gets highlighted. For example, in this case, if I hover my cursor over source, you'll see that source is highlighted here and it is also highlighted here, which is where it is used again. Similarly, if I come here and I 
click on table.add column, you can see wherever it is used in the entire query code, it gets highlighted. Now, if I want to quickly cycle through this, and this is a very small code, but in, let's say you're working with a query that has a lot of lines, it would be difficult for you to go and manually spot wherever a variable is used or the, uh, the value source is used or a formula is used. So you can use this keyboard shortcut F7. So when I have this already highlighted and my cursor is already in there, if I press F7, it is going to go to the next highlighted value. See what happens when I press F7, it goes to source here. Similarly, if I come here and I highlight table.add column, when I press F7, it is going to go to the next one and then F7, it goes to the next one again. So this could be quite useful when you have a lot of variables and you want to quickly debug your code or go through and understand what's going on. Now, if you want to cycle through in the reverse direction, so let's say I want to go back, then you can use Shift F7. So when I press F7, it is going to move forward. But when I use Shift F7, it is going to move back and then cycle through that, that set of highlighted keywords. If you want to add indentation to your code, you can use the tab key. So wherever I have my cursor, if I use the tab key, it is going to insert an indentation that will be equal to three blank characters. See what happens? I have the cursor here. When I use the tab key, it inserts these three space characters and pushes everything what is on the right to the cursor, three characters ahead. Now, if I want to bring this back or so remove this indentation, I cannot use shift tab. Shift tab is usually used in many programs, but not in the advanced editor. If you want to remove these three characters, you would have to use the backspace key. What shift tab does is it is going to change the indentation of the entire step. For example, in this case, let's say I have this step here. I have these three indentation characters here in the beginning. If I use shift tab anywhere, I have my cursor anywhere in the line and I use shift tab, this entire step is going to go back by three characters. See what happens? I use shift tab and this entire step goes back. But if I use tab, it is going to give me three characters right where I have the cursor. So you cannot use tab and then shift tab as a reverse of tab, but you can use tab to insert three characters. And if you want to remove them, you have to use backspace. But if you want to change the indentation of the entire step and bring it back by three characters, then you can use shift tab. If you want to change the indentation level of the entire step, you can use the keyboard shortcut control followed by the square bracket key. So in this case, if I want to, let's say, add indentation so the entire step moves to the right, then I can hold the control key and then use the closing square bracket key. And when I do that, it is going to add three characters to the beginning. And you can continue to do that. And it is going to add these three characters indentation. If you want to remove the indentation, so you want to bring this back, you can hold the control key and then use the starting square bracket key. And then it is going to bring back the indentation. So this is how you can change the indentation of the entire step. If you want to bring indentation anywhere specifically within the step, then you can use the tab key. If you want to select everything that is after the cursor till the end of the line or beginning of the line, you can use the keyboard shortcut shift and home to select till the beginning and shift and end to select till the end. So here I have my cursor here and I want to select this entire line till here. So I would just bring my cursor here and then use shift end. So hold the shift key and press the end key. And when you do that, it is going to select till the end of this line. And if I have my cursor here and I want to select till the beginning, then I would use shift home. So hold the shift key and press the home key. Now, if you want to do it for the entire query, so for example, let's say I want to select everything till the beginning. So I can just use control shift home. So when I use control shift home, it is going to select everything from the beginning till the cursor. And if I want to select from the cursor till the end, I can use control shift end. So it is going to select from the cursor position till the end of the query. If you have a lot of steps in your query and there is a lot of code and you want to navigate through it, you can use control down arrow key or up arrow key. And when you do that, it is going to shift the screen by one code line. And if you want to move it by one code window, you can use alt and then page up or page down. So now when I hold the alt key and use page down, you can see it goes down by an entire code window. Now I do not have enough code here, but if you have more code, then you'll see that every time you use page down, it is going to move down by one code window. And and if you want to move by just one line, you can use control up arrow key or down arrow key. 
If you want to delete an entire step, you can bring your cursor anywhere in the step and then use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift K. So when you hold the Control and the Shift key and then press the K key, it is going to remove the entire step. So in this case, I have this step inserted here and I have the cursor in this step. So when I use Control Shift K, that entire step is removed and you can use Control Z to get the step back. Also, if you want to remove multiple steps, so in this case, I would select all these steps and now I can use Control Shift K and all the three steps have been removed. If you want to duplicate a step, you can use a keyboard shortcut to do this. So here in this case, I have this step and let's say I want to duplicate this entire step. So I can bring my cursor anywhere in this step and then use the keyboard shortcut Alt Shift and then Down Arrow Key. So when I hold the Alt and the Shift key and use the Down Arrow Key, it is going to give me a duplicate of this step. Now you can use the Up Arrow Key or Down Arrow Key, doesn't matter, you anyway end up with a duplicate step and both of these steps are together. Now, if you want to do it for multiple steps, so for example, let's say I want to duplicate both of these steps, you can select these steps entirely or just select part of these so that a part of uh, both of these steps is selected and then use the same keyboard shortcut, Alt Shift, down arrow key and it is going to give you a duplicate of these two steps. If you want to put part of your query or any specific keyword within double quotes or brackets, then you can use this keyboard shortcut. For example, let's say I want to put this in double quotes. Now it doesn't make sense for this function, but let's say you are typing your code, you're manually typing and you have written something, but you want to now put that entire thing in double quotes. Then just select that part of the text that you want to put in double quotes, then hold the shift key and then press the double quote key on your keyboard. And when you do that, it is going to put that entire thing in double quotes. Similarly, if you want to put it in curly brackets, let's say I'm creating a list and I've already typed my items and I now want to put that entire thing in a list, I can just select it and then use the shift key and then the curly bracket opening key on your keyboard. So when I use shift and curly bracket opening key, it is going to put that entire thing within curly bracket. And the same thing happens with parentheses. If you want to put this within parentheses, you can select this entire thing and then hold the shift key and then use the opening parenthesis key and it is going to put this entire thing in parenthesis. Here's a very interesting keyboard shortcut for you. Let's say you want to have multiple cursors in your advanced editor. Now, why would you want it? Because let's say you want to make the changes in multiple places. For example, let's say in this case, I have this variable source and I also have it here. But let's say I want to change the name. I want to make this something else. Instead of me coming here and making the change first here and then here, what I can do is come here, place my cursor at the end of this variable, then hold the Alt key and then place the cursor here. So click here and you'll see that now I have two blinking cursors and I can make the changes here. For example, if I want to rename this to, let's say, something like TBL, I can just come here and make the changes. And you can see the changes is done in both the places. So if you are making changes and the same change needs to be done in multiple places, instead of you going and doing the changes one by one, you can just use the Alt and click uh, trick to get multiple cursors. So for example, if I want a cursor here, then I hold the Alt key and I want a cursor here and cursor here and cursor here. You can see I now have four blinking cursors. So this will help you make the edits a little faster. When you make changes in the advanced editor, if you want to redo or undo the changes, you can do that. So you can use Control Z to undo the changes and you can use Control Y to redo the changes. For example, if I come here and I remove this line and I want it back, I can use Control Z to get it back. And if I want to redo it, I can use Control Y to remove it again. And the final shortcut is about getting more information about the functions that are used in the advanced editor. For example, in this case, if I want to quickly know what does date.el do, I can bring my cursor after the dot and then use control spacebar. So I hold the control key and press the spacebar key. And when I do that, it is going to open this list with this function at the top. And then I get this information. In case you do not see this information, you keep on holding the control key and press tab again. So it is going to show you that this function returns the year component. Similarly, if I come here, I can place my cursor here after table dot and then use control tab. It shows me this list and it tells me what this function does. So if you're working with queries that are generated automatically while you were doing the steps in the interface and then you're going through the code and you want to understand a function, you can use this shortcut. 
That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.